have some good news for you. Close up, far away. Close up, far away. Call Zoe Zion. Zoe! Close up. Come on. Hello. Come on. I wasn't, I wasn't always like this. When I, when I was two, I had to get my hands cut off because I was sick. I don't know what a child hand looks like. It could be this color or this color. I don't know. You had to make a muscle. Over here. Let me see how strong you are. We have followed Zion for probably about a year and a half now um, and done extensive evaluations to see if he was a good candidate for hand transplant. So, when I get these hands, I will be proud of what hands I get. I will be proud. I will be too. Because they're going to be your new hands. You excited? And if it gets messed up, it's not going to get messed up. You excited? I don't care because I have my family. As far as we know, it's never been even attempted in a child. One of the things that's unique about Zion is that he already had kidney transplants. He's on medication for rejection, and so essentially we could piggyback off of that same medication. Our concerns about doing these hand transplants in anybody is that once you do it, the patient has to stay on lifelong medications so they don't reject. And those medications increase the risk of infection and they also increase your risk of having some cancer develop later on in life. And so for a child, that's a very, very difficult decision. Stand up straight. Let me see your arm. Yeah, I want you to make a fist for me. Make a fist. Good. Relax. When I met Zion, I said, why do you want hands? Zion, why do you want hands? He's a very, very intelligent young man. He said, I want to swing on the monkey bars. My grandmother says, I'm smarter than a lot of grown-ups. I'm really smarter than a lot of grown-ups. You know, that's sort of a milestone for a lot of kids. And why shouldn't he be like another child? And, you know, our, our hope is over time that indeed he'll be able to do that. If that's a TV camera, he wants to know if he's on TV. This is just like another hurdle that he jumps. I can't, I can't, there is no need. He jumped so many hurdles. He's so amazing. This isn't the first amazing thing that he's done. He's done, been doing amazing things since he's been sick. I don't know many adults that could handle half of his life on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh! But sometimes I just think some of my classmates, they don't mean to say mean things to me, but it just slips out. So, either, either somebody says something to me, and then I just figure it, it slipped out, and they didn't mean to say it. <laughs> Everybody has their own way of thinking. Each year, there are only 15 children, based on the databases, that would even be eligible to donate hands. And then it comes down to the organ procurement organizations approaching families at a terrible time, the loss of a child. You should stop and think about that. So the fact that he was put on the waiting list for hands in April, and three months later, this came along. That in and of itself is a remarkable story.
Chrissy called me and she's like, okay, we have a match. I'm like, stop playing Chrissy. And she's like, no, I'm serious. We have about 12 surgeons and, uh, you know, a whole uh, bevy of nurses, at least eight nurses uh, circling in and out. And then a team of anesthesiologists, I think uh, at least uh, three or four of them that'll be working throughout the night. So it's a large team. There, there's an expression in surgery. Preparation is the only shortcut you need. And particularly in surgery and in highly complex operations, um, you know, we prepare. So we're about to get started. Uh, Zion's just come into the room and they're starting to put uh, intravenous lines in and get ready for the surgery. We'll prepare the uh, yeah, donor limbs and the recipient sites and then do the actual transplantation. So expect to be here all night, but uh, hopefully at the end we'll have two hands on two arms. Okay, hi. Good to see you, Doctor. How are you? Ready? Good. We've uh, rehearsed. We know our steps, we know each other, uh, we know what we have to do today. And I think everybody assembled here has a commitment to this patient and uh, making this a reality for this little boy. Uh, we can have uh, complications, uh, we can fail, uh, we can have troubles, but we're not planning on it. So everybody is familiar with their particular role and I just want to say in advance, uh, we'll do our best, and we're all here together. This is a new arena of um, reconstructive surgery. It's a new arena in transplant surgery. Uh, this gives new hope, not only to the adults, but particularly children. And there are ethical issues and questions about the implications for that, but. Uh, that deceased child's hands and expression, if you will, will live on in Zion. And that's a pretty profound thing when you, you think about it. In the beginning of the operation, we actually had four teams operating at the same time. And each of them had specific things they were supposed to do. So they had to find all the structures, put pre-made tags on for every single structure that we'd have to repair and they would have to sew those onto the nerves, blood vessels, tendons, etc. It's one thing to sew adult vessels, which in and of themselves are small and it requires a kind of skill, but the highest echelons of reconstructive microsurgery take place in, in children small children. And my colleagues who participate in the microvascular aspects of the care are just the best in the world. I think, you know, the blade goes here, so we're going to have to cut this really short. Right. Blood is going across the hook up here. And you can see the hand right here starting to pink up. You see the capillary refill? Do you see that? See it's white when I touch it? And then it pinks up. And now that's starting to get out to the level of the fingers. How's my baby? Zion's doing great. Doing well. He's doing well. He just came out to give you an update. Yeah, thank you. So we've gone through a lot so okay. far. Yeah, you know, we broke this thing in, down into four different parts, okay. and we're on this last part here. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the hands have already been attached, so the bones are back together, and Dr. Levin and the other microsurgeons are working on putting the arteries and veins together. So both we want to really make sure that this was going to work for our patient and work for a lifetime, not just a year. Uh, for us, this is really not just a technical exercise. It's really trying to you know, restore a better level of lifetime function for these patients.
I think uh, all of you who know about microsurgery and all of you do know that we're not out of the woods and this is sort of just the first step and we have to be very vigilant and we have a whole protocol on how to take care of this little guy but um, from the bottom of my heart, thanks. We have some good news for you. Your little guy has two hands. Hi, Zion. And so, what might we say about Zion Harvey in 10 years or 15 years? What might we say about this? I hope. He's the first of literally hundreds or thousands of patients that are going to be afforded this operation. Right. Yep. Up, 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 up. Nice. No hands. <laughs> That's all you. <laughs> Don't let me get it. Let him take Don't it. Let me get it. Don't tug a war. <laughs> He's in no better place than in the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia to make sure he gets through this and does well. Me and Zoe want a puppy. <laughs> Where's the puppy going to live? My room. Where else? <laughs>